Hello, welcome to the Small Business Briefing put on by the Small Business Association of Michigan. My name is Brian Kelly and I have the honor and priv privilege of uh, serving as the CEO of the Small Business Association. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Miller, Vice President of Marketing and Strategic Communications. Welcome to today's show. Um, we're glad you're joining us today. All right, well, we do have uh, actually a pretty, I think, several interesting things to talk about today. First, um, I wanted to uh, to acknowledge and, and introduce Alexa Kramer, who is the Director of Government Operations for the Small Business Association of Michigan. And uh, Alexa had an opportunity to go uh, just earlier this week to uh, to Washington, D.C., where there was a board meeting from uh, of the National Small Business Association and also uh, some visits up on the Hill. So um, Alexa, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us and maybe just give us a, a, a sense, the National Small Business Association of which we are a member. So um, we're, we're independent, okay? So we're not a division of them, but we are a member of that organization. Um, maybe uh, give us uh, a little bit of insight about uh, the, the priorities and the topics that uh, the NSBA is focusing on these days. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me on. We were able to, uh, like you mentioned, spend some time in Washington, D.C. with the National Small Business Association, but also uh, small business owners from all across um, the nation, which was always a, always a good time to hang out with them. Um, the National Small Business Association put on their board meeting and then also had what they call their Washington presentation. So this is an, an annual thing that the national group does. Um, they bring in a lot of folks from the Hill to give presentations. They do a lot of roundtables on stuff like uh, tax policy, procure, uh, procurement, um, the list goes on and on. It was a really jam-packed session uh, over the, the couple days. Um, but what was really interesting was, again, just being able to get with um, other small business owners and network and expand your networks. But then also there was an opportunity to do a lot of Hill visits, which uh, we took advantage of uh, from SBM's perspective and set up uh, a lot of meetings with our Michigan delegation to talk about what's important for our small businesses here in Michigan. I think that it was a really positive step for SBM just because we know that our uh, organization is wanting to expand our federal advocacy. And so I think it was a really critical uh, step this last trip to get in front of our delegation to make it known and for really for SBM to be a resource for them, to be that premier organization that they turn to to say, um, hey, what's going on, uh, boots on the ground. And so I think it really helped us continue to strengthen the relationships that we have with our Michigan delegation. So we met with folks uh, like Representative uh, Jack Bergman, uh, Representative Tim Wahlberg. Uh, we met with Congresswoman Haley Stevens, uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, and then we were able to also meet with Congresswoman Lisa McLean. Um, and so throughout those meetings, we were able to chat with them about some things that we were hearing boots on the ground. And then I was able to kind of give the SBAM perspective. Again, really making sure that they know that we are a resource to them. But then also talk about some priorities that we know are important for our members. So, and at the federal level. So things like uh, the WOO reauthorization that helped um, job seekers have access to employment and education and the training that they need for the labor market. Another, um, another topic was the trade adjustment assistance program. This is something that just lapsed back in uh, July, but it's really um, a program that assists workers within the United States that may have lost their job due to, um, due to national trade that they have to kind, kind of re-skill, retool and shift to a different industry and hopefully again become employees of our of our members. So it's a really great program. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, Michigan has really utilized it and that program has lapsed um, like I mentioned in July 1. So wanting to get that reauthorized. We were able to talk about H2B visas, which I'm sure that we've talked about on, on the briefing before, um, but really allowing small business owners to get the workers that they need um, from out of state, uh, outside of the United States in order to meet their, their demand. These are temporary seasonal workers um, and really the hospitality, um, agriculture, uh, things like carnivals, even industries that you wouldn't necessarily think of really rely on these H2B visas. And so really talking about that process and how we can make it better. 
for our Michigan businesses. And then last but not least, um, Wagner Pizer, that is a proposed rule within the de Department of uh, Labor that would really shake up Michigan's delivery system for our workforce agency. Michigan is, is a different system compared to a lot of the other states. We have a, a pretty unique system here that really relies on our local Michigan Works Agency staff to deliver services that are just really quick um, and efficient responses to our um, employees and employers. And so uh, if this rule would to go, were to go through, it would really disrupt our service and really um, put a, a hamper on um, the services that we're able to uh, provide here in Michigan. So really making it known that this would be uh, very detrimental to our small business community and business community at large. So that's just kind of high level, some of the, the issue areas that we were able to talk about. Again, a really important step for SBAN to continue to build that relationship with our federal delegation. We know it's really important to not only be the premier small business voice here in Michigan, in Lansing, um, but also at that national level. Great. and um, and. It's wonderful that we had uh, five members of Congress that did take time to meet with you and, and the delegation, and and, uh, and we did have some uh, some some members that did uh, actually make the trip uh, as well to um, to uh, to Washington to to tell the story. So it's one thing for us, Pam, to tell the story, but we had some uh, some Michigan small business owners that uh, that were along. And, and are part of the uh, the work that we do with the small the National Small Business Association, um, and so uh, just a, as a an example, you mentioned H two B visas, and um, and Mark Ware, who's uh, owner of the um, of Mission Point up on Mackinac Island, was uh, was there as well. In fact, uh, but Mark was there for uh, for two reasons. Why don't you give us a the scoop on um, on the special honor that Mark Ware received. Yeah, so Mark, we were really proud that he was a finalist for the National Small Business um, Advocate of the Year Award. So he was one of five finalists um, nationwide. And it was really centered on his work, not only on some of the issues that we handle here at, at SBAM at the state level, but the H2B visa issue, something that's really important for uh, Mission Point Resort, his his resort, in order to meet customer demand, and he has been a tremendous voice um, at the federal level for the importance of that to just the structure of our uh, small business community. So it was really great to see Mark in action, both at Capitol Hill, but also being uh, recognized for all of the work that he's done over the last several years on this really important topic. Yeah, and we had and we we had other um, other members as well that joined in those meetings with uh, with the members of of Congress, and so these are these are real uh, advocacy champions that are willing to go out there and tell the story. Um, now, Alexa, you're um, you're managing a new um, a new program at SBAM uh, that that is really aimed at identifying and helping more small business owners to uh, to to do what. What Mark did to do what Milan Gandhi uh, does. He's one, another one of our members that um, that uh, that joined you in Washington there um, to to tell the story and be a part of it. Tell us a little bit about the SBAM Advocacy Champs. Yeah, so this is our latest member benefit that uh, many of us on staff are very excited about, and it does just that. Really helping our members, no matter where you are. I like to say on your advocacy journey, right? If you're um, really a novice, or if you're someone that is uh, pretty seasoned, there's something for you that we're able to offer, but it's really just tools, um, courses, if you will, to really be able to strengthen your own voice. So again, I can talk to our uh, Michigan delegation and our state legislators all day, but it's really, really important for our small business owners to have their own voice. And so there are five sort of uh, courses that we will be offering. The first is just general advocacy. So maybe someone who's a little bit more uh, new in the advocacy space, just learning how to uh, make your case to legislators, be able to testify in front of um, committee, um, how to communicate with legislators, all of that really good and important stuff. The second would be about our boards and commissions. So we have several boards and commissions in the state of Michigan on a variety of topics. 
And they're always looking for folks to uh, sit on those boards and commissions. And we think it's a really great avenue for our small business owners to have a voice in areas that they're really an expert on. And so just walking them through the process, letting them know what that looks like, that would be kind of the second course offering. Um, the third is a media training, which is a really exciting one. We might have a member that is really great when it comes to just one-on-one -on -one conversations with a legislator, but might freeze up when there is a camera in your face, which is very understandable, right? And so getting them to feel really comfortable um, using their voice in a media setting, being able to have interviews, talk to reporters, uh, it's a really important skill set for our small business owners to be able to hone. So that's the third bucket. And then the last two is kind of a part one and part two. The first part um, is just a kind of a campaign school, but in, for um, kind of a, you want to be in the background and learn about a campaign. What does that look like? Um, so maybe you yourself aren't ready to run, but you want to help other small business owners get into elected positions, either at the local or state level. And so really giving you the tools to be able to run a good campaign. And then the second part is maybe you yourself are looking for an opportunity to run for office. So how do you campaign? What does it look like? How do you be a small business owner while also holding an elected office? Um, all of that that good stuff is kind of in that last bucket. So again, SPM Advocacy Champions, if you're interested in this um, newest member benefit, please reach out to um, myself or Kelly Saunders on our team, um, and we'll be able to get you in the system to get you trained and ready to go. All right, very good. And I think that Sarah dropped a link in the chat as well, if you want to check out uh, more about that, and uh, and there's there's no cost if you're a member of ours, um, and this is just it's it would be of huge value uh, to the small business community and the work that we do to have more small business owners side by side with us while we are um, while we are, are out there uh, advocating for what's best for small business in the public policy arena. There's a lot of forms you know, just that that could take. As Alexa just went through all these different possibilities. A lot of ways to impact it and so uh the, the more the merrier so if you thought about this or you see you know people like mark Ware that are getting involved or you've seen patty eisenbron uh, you know who owns uh, a, a brewery and uh one in, in oakland and one in macomb county um even on national news uh on a couple of occasions representing the the small business voice for sbam uh, it's just really, really powerful stuff. And um, and the, the more that we have, the better. Uh, but this stuff, you know, it's it's it can be kind of scary. Go thinking about testifying in a committee, thinking about um, talking to the media. Um, you know, there's there's uh, but it's a it's a skill set, and we'd love to we'd love to have you part of the family. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Alexa. We appreciate your report on the DC trip. Um, maybe some of you have seen some photos floating around from uh, from that that uh, trip last week, and we have some more information on Mark's award on our website as well. Uh, so, Brian, speaking of politics, the Michigan Legislature was back in session this week. What's on the docket related to small business? Well, the the legislature, and in, in in particular, the Tax Policy Committee took up a uh, a bill that is that does some cleanup work on the pass-through entity tax. So we've talked about this on the um, on the small business briefing before uh, in the at the end of the, the previous term in uh, what's called the lame duck session, there was a bill that was passed that allowed flow through entities to pay the, their income tax as a business tax um, and then um, the benefit of doing that allows them to deduct, deduct the full amount on their federal tax return. And uh, whereas today, the most small businesses can't deduct all of their state um, income taxes on business income because it's on their personal tax return and there's a $10,000 cap for all state and local taxes. And, um, and so um, th this was, a, this was a, a, a great benefit for many pass-through entities to be able to have the option to file like this. However, um, they put on the election where you have to make the election that you're going to file your taxes in this way, and they they put such a short window on that that um, it made it difficult for small business owners to really take advantage of. 
And so um, we're going to have, we're going to try and get uh, next week on the show um, a, uh, a CPA. We'll see if Jamie LaPiccolo is available. He's, um, he's you know, been, been a little while since he's been on the show, but just a great, uh, a great CPA that can boil this stuff down. But to talk about why it's important that this change be made. The idea is to make it more in reach of more small businesses and to give time for them to make intelligent decisions on whether filing in this way is in their best interest. So um, that's, I would say of all the bills that are running through from a, from a small business perspective, that this is the one that um, there's this potential benefit out there. There's a bill that passed in, in, in the past and, it's a good, and it was a, a good uh, concept, but there were some pretty narrow timeframes on it that um, that that made it such that a lot of small business owners um, I missed out on the opportunity and um, moving forward in the future, we really want to make sure that uh, we get the full benefit. So we'll have Jane, Jamie come back. Um, there is another day in the legislature scheduled before the election, just one more on the 28th of September. Um, but you know, this is as you might have noticed, um, this is an election year, but like everything is, um, everything's up. You know, there's new districts, House and Senate, and um, in Congress. So there's a lot of action at the legislative level and the congressional level, and then the statewide elections are up. A couple of Supreme Court races, the Court of Appeals. Um, just so there's a lot to keep track of, a lot that's happening. But what that means usually is that there's very little legislative activity between uh, Labor Day and the election. So we've had one session day, there'll be another one uh, next week. And uh, that's all that's scheduled so far. Uh, so, you know, the keeping track of the legislation has not been hard <laughs> this last, uh, this last uh, month or so, but, uh, but this is an important one, one that we're hopeful will make it all the way through the process by the end of the year. All right, and like you said, we'll try to get Jamie on next week to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, so Brian, as you predicted, interest rates, they were increased again. Yeah, the, uh, the Federal Reserve had come, um, scripted that they were going to uh, in, increase interest rates. The only real question was whether or not it was gonna be 50 basis points or 75 basis points. Um, the, um, it ended up being 75 basis points and, um, and that was kind of priced in. I mean, people really did um, expect that uh, to be the case. What was a surprise though, was that as they were talking about the future, they're now setting expectations that are potentially 100 basis points or a full percentage increase next time. That has not happened in a very, very long time. You'd have to go back to <clears throat> 1980, the last time you saw an increase like that. And that was uh, 2% actually back then. That was after like five or six years of inflation in, in bad shape. So that was a, um, it was what was expected, but they've set expectations in the future that um, I think indicate they're, they continue to be extremely concerned about inflation. All right, so Brian, um, as we talked about the election coming up, a new poll was just uh, released. Um, and how are we looking here in Michigan um, in the governor's race? Well, <clears throat> I guess it depends on who you want to win. <laughs> the, um, it definitely is starting to look lopsided. So, <clears throat> There is, uh, SBAM has not taken a position or endorsed any candidate in the, in the gubernatorial election. But the, uh, the most recent polling that was just out today, it shows Whitmer um, expanding the, the lead on Dixon. Uh, so Governor Whitmer, a Democrat who's um, running for reelection, the challenger Republican, um, Tudor Dixon. And um, it was a 16 point margin, 55 to 39. So this was um, at the at Dixon at 39 is actually pretty consistent with what we've been uh, seeing 30, 38, 39, 40, 41 percent like that kind of a range around 40 percent. Governor Whitmer had been um, just under 50 percent, and um, in a lot of the polling, so in the high 40s. The difference here that we're seeing is that the um, is that the um, Governor Whitmer's uh, numbers going above 50%. So that's a pretty big move. It means that uh, she has been supported by the vast majority of the um, 
of independence, at least as represented by this most recent poll um, that was released by the, uh, the Detroit Free Press. So it's a pretty big move um, for a candidate when you're running for office. And as people would know that uh, know any of my background, I've run for office myself uh, plenty of times. I uh, won most of those elections, just not the last one. And um, in the uh, and so the but in that when you get over 50 percent, that's a pretty big that's a pretty big moment. Now, most of the polling that came out previously was not over 50 percent. So this is a poll. It's a snapshot. Not necessary. Sometimes you have outliers, but um, but if you're in the Whitmer campaign, you're thrilled with that uh, with that type of movement that you're seeing um, the um, the the numbers move from the high 40s into the mid 50s. Uh, big move, uh, but it it's not terribly surprising either when you look at the kind of the the lopsided um, financial advantage. So you know when you have one candidate that has got kind of endless amount of resources and on TV a lot and the other that um, hasn't really been able to sustain much of a presence on TV. Um, obviously that's gonna accumulate um, and, and potentially widen the, the, uh, the gap between the two candidates. And you did mention SBAM has not taken a position um, in this race. We will be compiling another voter guide. Some of you may recall, we did do a gubernatorial um, primary voting guide back in August. We will have a voter guide for the governor's race, secretary of state and attorney general coming out in early October. So um, of course we'll share that here, but you can, you can learn more on our site when that's available. And all of our endorsements are on the website, sbm.org, they're right on the homepage. So please go take a look and see who we've endorsed for the House and Senate. Um, one last thing before we say goodbye for today. Next week, we are hosting a webinar called The Power of Connections. And this is going to feature Derek Dickow and Rick Becker. Brian, you're actually going to moderate this webinar as well. And it'll provide tips to stand out and make powerful and meaningful connections. And that really is what Derek Dickow is great at. He hosted a session at our annual meeting that was uh, well attended and well reviewed. So I encourage you to register for this webinar. It's Wednesday, September 28th. Uh, you can learn more again at sbam.org slash events. So have a great rest of your week and we'll be back here on Monday. Thanks everybody. See you next week.